Thank you for joining us for the Chronicles of Chiron, the Lion, the Witch, and the Healer. My name is Christopher, the Astro Medium, and we have a very special guest with us tonight. Introduce yourself. Hi, Christopher. Thanks for having me on. I'm Darshna Patel. I'm an information systems engineer, a vibrational alchemist, and a creator of a new framework for multidimensional living called Ion Nation. Wonderful. I love your work. I have firsthand contact with the work that you do, and I've seen it develop, and I really want to share it with the world. I want to get this information out there. So for those of you who are just joining us, this is the Chronicles of Chiron, and Chiron is the archetypal wounded healer in astrology, and on this show, we cover all kinds of topics that range from different healing modalities, ascension and awakening, ascension symptoms, what's going on in the collective right now, and we really want to take an in-depth look into different healing modalities that would benefit you. So Chiron is the energy of transmuting your pain into power. And we definitely, because Chiron sits in between Saturn and Uranus, it's the bridge. It's the rainbow bridge between the physical reality and the non-physical realms and the transmutation of consciousness that follows. So, Darshna, please tell me, what is it that you do? What kind of services do you offer? Um, I know I have received services from you, healing services that I can attest to, but I want to hear from you all that you offer and what it has developed into. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, but Christopher, the, the work is evolving, you know, over this last year, year and a half, I did take a pretty big hiatus from seeing clients. So I've just mm -hmm. now kind of just started, um, getting back into it. And I've noticed that the needs out there in the market are changing as, as people are literally rapidly ascending. So yes. I will tell you right now, my work, I would say in the next probably couple of months is going to shift again, but the best way to describe what I do is to help individuals and groups evolve. And it can be evolution from the standpoint of conflict structures, communication structures, information system engineering and process optimization structures, an entire re-architecture of systems and, and frameworks that can usher in a new model of reality. Um, at the individual level, I help people get into flow state. If I were to summarize mm. what I do, I help people get into flow state, that synchronized state, which in the model, I'm just going to real quickly tip this up. Synchronization sure. is at the Perfect. top of yes. the model. Because there it is right there, everybody. <laughs> once we're aligned to that divine impulse, we know that anything becomes possible. It's really opening up that intuitively logical door for people and organizations. And I've done that both within professional organizations for over 20 years. I was a master of change and conflict, leading large scale global implementation and change programs for the largest companies of the world. So I also have a view into all the systems and structures of yes. banking, defense, health I see, I know why products. spirit took you there. I, <laughs> I get it, I understand. And that, so, that leads me to the question, how? Where did all of this start? Where did, it, where did it go from wanting to help humans to wanting to help humans ascend? Yeah. And have you always been spiritual or metaphysical or connected in this way? Yeah, my earliest childhood memories were being um, in my, we had a tiny backyard when we first moved to the U.S. And my earliest memories were looking out into, into like the trees and the bushes and being able to see the energetic network of energy. Like all of a sudden, I remember that perception of being able to see and feel energy and then was getting guidance and intuition from that point forward. So as a child, when you're perceiving that way, you assume everyone else is perceiving that way. Yeah. So what that illuminated for me many years later when I realized that not everyone perceives the interconnected web of energy we're not reacting or we're not interacting with that beautiful sacredness of what it is to be a being that's a part of a beingness this web of interconnected beautiful vibration it's all you know one source vibration one emanation and we're nothing but you know like a rubber band holding creative tension and so the yes. center of this model is nothing more than helping us anchor and ground into the creative tension of who we are. So this was an evolution of 
my, my core question in life is, if everything is vibration, how can we change reality? So as a child, being able to see that everything is vibration, that became my quest then was, how do I climb out of box after box after box to help shift what becomes possible for self and other and system and society, the entire civilization? Because if we know everything is vibration, how do we change reality? But what happened in the eight years it took me to create this is a deeper question wow. emerged was what holds current reality in place was the deeper question. And that then I started unpacking the quantum entanglement of how it all works. And with the information systems engineering background, I understand reality as a construct. It's a mental construct at the bit and byte level, which is then collectively agreed upon with communication at the bottom of the model. South side is the communing, commune at ion, every ION word. I was, I was about to say, I was about to go you there because that, that kind of stuff I have, for those of you who are into astrology or just getting into astrology, Chiron is an asteroid, but another asteroid is Pallas or also known as Pallas Athena. My Pallas is in Virgo and that is, Pallas is responsible for many things, but one of the things that it is responsible for in your birth chart is pattern recognition. So what I... I have extreme pattern recognition abilities. I'm very confident about that. So when I started to get into your work and started to notice that ion at the end of everything, but I started to understand how it was finding its way into our consciousness through language and, and it opened all this stuff up. So please tell me about that portion of your work and how all that started. Yeah. Like how did you go from being a muggle to a magic person accepting it and now you're here doing it and everyone knows? Yeah. Well, the turn your eye on. So if everything is tension or flow, what every ION word is telling us what we're doing with that energy. So through my journey of, you know, finding what is the way for me to express the understanding that I've gained through time, whether it was through the corporate change conflict lens, through the mm -hmm. information systems engineering lens, and then I got ill. I was very ill for about a decade. I was a high power corporate consultant. I love what I did. I loved organizations. At the same time, though, I was learning and reflecting about all the projects I had worked on in corporate, including the first global credit risk exposure management system for one of the biggest banks on the planet. Literally, I was taking flat files and loading them into multidimensional databases and seeing it's how much so debt there was in the world. That. Because when, earlier when you were talking about all this, I said, okay, there's going to be a lot of woo-woo people. And, I, and look, I have woo-woo in me, but I'm very scientific, okay? I love geometry and um, multidimensionality and quantum physics. You can take me there. And Spirit was showing me um, lots of geometry, lots of holograms, okay? Kind of the model behind, of you, behind you kind of splitting and becoming like bigger. Uh, and like, like those little um, toys that, those little balls that you expand, like, I also can remote view, so you can't hide anything from me. But um, yeah, I, I'm really interested in what took you from this, because from what I'm hearing, you didn't just work corporate jobs. It was special. It was unique and it was something you were it was something that was created by you a lot of it, or it was pioneered by you. So it's not far fetched to think that if you just took it in a, into this direction, which seems to actually be the more futuristic direction, how did that get started? And what struck you, what struck you and told you, I need to move in this direction now? So with, is the direction out of corporate into the energy work or yes, now it's yes. kind of going back? Out of corporate, so I was ill for about a decade and no one could figure out what was going on. Like seriously, body shut down, fever of 103 for multiple years. Like everyone, the doctors didn't know what was going on. So in that breakdown, as I started really tapping in, you know, intuition was always guiding me on my path. First of all, I left an arranged marriage, which I had at 19. So my uh -huh. wings were clipped. You know, I was already in these oppressive, culturally indoctrinated structures. Yes. Oppressive, I mean, terribly misogynistic. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, and I have a daughter now, 21. Um, 
so escaping that system helped me understand that there was always more that we could grow into and every evolution I took more puzzle pieces would come in. So I just realized we grow in capacity to understand and evolve because reality is just layers of abstraction. So when I left okay. corporate and was ill, I knew that it was so clear that my path and all the astrology pointers, everything in my horoscope as an Indian child, we get our astrology birth yes. done at birth. We're yes. named based on our Rasi, which is the position, yes. right? Yes. So er, all my path was about she's going to be a rebel and shake things up. And they were trying mm -hmm. to keep me from that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I knew that my path was supposed to lead in, in these awkward, weird directions. So when I left, right. it, I trusted that I was supposed to follow these hands that had something that flowed through them. I didn't even know the word Reiki until probably like a decade ago, but that's what I've been doing since I was a child was energy work. It doesn't really need a name. It just, right. Is a thing, right. Right. So that's well, that, when I that, made the leap. That takes that takes me to when I had a session with you. So I've had two sessions with you. Um, the first one was right after I moved to Atlanta two years ago, and um, and I was feeling okay at the time. You know, I had it was about six months after a Kundalini upgrade, so I was I was feeling okay. I was excited to be here, and I wanted a fresh start. And I definitely I had been following channeling Eric for years, so. That's how I came across you was through Jamie. So I came in contact with that work. I felt things. It was the second one that I really felt things. And I was all, and I, during the second one, I was experiencing throat activations, um, heart opening, different things like that. And I could really feel, okay? So just so everybody knows, because I am not full of shit when I talk about, when I bring people on here, you know, because I, I have a salesman kind of showmanship, okay? But I want people to take this very seriously. I was on that table and, you know, I'm very aware of my body and I just noticed all this twitching or all this tingling happening one side to the other. And I wasn't really sure because it would start subtle and then it was so much. It was like, bubbles under my skin and I felt it on only one side and then on the other and I remember thinking should I tell her that that happened just so she knows like it was she had a good session I want her to know it was good and you brought it up I went and you said that you had to do that I went from left side and then I went to right side to kind of balance something out and I was like shit fire if that wasn't exactly what I felt and I need that and people watching this need that type of experience where at least you can feel something happening. Because I have had many healings, not saying they didn't work, but that you just didn't feel anything and maybe nothing was resonating at the time. Maybe you did it for a reason that spirit didn't agree with or you were doing it out of fear that you weren't moving in the right direction when you actually were. The pain you were going through was just things purging. There's a lot of factors that I think about but I felt something. So please tell me about that. Cause I remember when I asked you, I said, what the hell are you doing? And you were like, well, it's kind of like Reiki, but I kind of went rogue. And I remember when you said that immediately, I thought, okay, I wonder if she's got any Aquarius in her chart. But so tell me about that. So what is it that you're doing? Cause people are going to want to know what it is that you offer. Yeah. So when I'm working on people and right now it's remotely, what happens is, you know, when you, when you connect with the energy grid, for me, all of a sudden layers of energy and information, if I need to see it, I'll see it. Otherwise I'm just feeling and flowing with it. And so I just allow myself to become the instrument of the extension of what the client needs. Like really, I'm just a tuning fork and I'm like, I'm here in service. Right. And then, yes. so, you know, as any good healer are, should feel that they are. Yeah. I'm an instrument to, to serve. And so what right. happens is I'm just literally feeling the calibrations and the energy flow. And I'm a drummer, I'm a percussionist. So I feel mm. patterns and pulses and impulses. And as an en information engineer, as a software programmer, I literally see and can construct things. And so I'm a cool vehicle and a vessel, I think, because I'm so easy to work with. So with the, you know, with the client that just gets on the table, it's just, it's, it's almost kind of, it's like a fun thing to do where you're just helping the body recalibrate itself to a deeper level of self attunement. 
is essentially it. That synchronized Absolutely. is all we're deepening. We're reminding the body its own resonance. And sometimes, you know, there's things that are clearing out. Like today I cleared out an old, it was actually an implant. It was a healer friend of mine. She's phenomenal. One of the most powerful healers that I know personally. And there was this old, they showed me, the guides were showing me, it was showing up um, uh, near her uh, uh, solar plexus off to mm -hmm. the right. And it was showing up as a plastic screw. And they were showing me, it's like a kid's toy. And they're like, there are upgrades happening right now where we're removing old 3D implants that are almost like child's play, but they had to be in there for a particular time to keep us in the 3D denser reality and being yes. safe to maintain it. Because it keeps so, your total frequency at a certain rate when it's still there. Yeah. Exactly. So that's anything can show up. I do a lot of the ancestral because that's part of my cleanup and lineage is a lot of Me the too. archetypal, right? It's all archetypal energies, which is what everything is. And so it's yes. just one vibration trying to resolve its own tension. I came to you because I was experiencing energetic up upgrades. I wasn't sleeping. Um, oh gosh, it was the anxiety was so horrendous. I was just wanting to do anything. Okay. And I needed to you know, go where I knew something would benefit me. So what are some reasons people come to you for healing? That's one of the most common ones are these ascension symptoms and the like, well, I'm pretty much got my stuff together, but why am I feeling this overwhelm or these downloads and I don't have the capacity to integrate it all? And I think a lot of us, especially practitioners recognize there's a real saturation point. Sometimes we need other resonances to help that integration process. But also what I'm finding is there's information sharing. We're like nodes of a computer, right? There's a master intelligence that's activating right now. So every exchange is sacred because we're exchanging and resolving our own energy in the process of sharing with others. And I believe that yes. people will find their way when they know that, oh, there's something that I can't quite work through. Because I'm like, Try yourself, and if you know you've hit that point when you're practiced enough, you know when it's like, yeah, this is something I need help with. That's where I can help. Um, but I, I'm always one for like, you know, you've got what you need, and you know when you need some extra, you know, I call it community support. Yes. Um, and the other thing is when people are finding that they're enjoying the experience of expansion or leveling up so to speak right when you've when you know the flow and you're like oh there's more for me to experience or explore i can help people get into those transcendent spaces and feel their own comfort and security in the that multi-dimensional time space beyond time space realm where yes. you can integrate all the aspects of you quite comfortably and just you know build that capacity to feel inner or multi-dimensional while still being very grounded and anchored. Yes, that's what people are missing that is when they're having these upgrades, when the third eye opens and the crown opens and the, the throat, which is, it's our divine right to move in this direction, okay? But it often pulls so much of the energy up here. You have people walking around dizzy, lightheaded, vertigo, feeling like something's moving underneath of them. I remember feeling like something was lifting me up and putting me back down. And every time I just thought, because it felt almost like when an elevator suddenly drops, just constantly. And it was because everything was just happening up here. And the, you know, the poor sacral chakra and the root chakra, they were releasing things as a result because they correlate with these upper chakras and not even understanding all that, I needed help and I, and I was so scared. And that's what's happening right now is we have waves of people, okay? 2020 did its thing. Now that two, 2012 happened, now we've reached 2020. Now we're moving into the next wave. The people are waking up like wildfire. Kundalini is rising. People are upgrading, downloading. Psychic abilities are coming online. But before all of that wonderful stuff. There is periods, dark night of the soul, extreme anxiety, panic, where the body doesn't know what to do with these frequencies, which was where I think your work would come in. So tell me, what? how does your ionation model 
tie in with your healing? Yeah, the correlation is evolving because this construct was a way for me to mentally put together the d dynamics. I Go ahead. see it. I see, see it. it. Sorry. Yes. It's like it is, I'm seeing it's an it. entire perspective to shift how we change, how we actually relate to reality. They're showing it to me like a spaceship. Like getting in the spaceship so that you don't have to like meditate for 20 hours to go there. Exactly. Wow. It's meant yeah, to it. keep us in, in literally, zero, this is zero point. It's engineered to be zero point, all triangles. Um, and it helps us navigate yes. the fabric of time space. And the four quadrants represent the individual psyche and then the actions in the exterior. I and want the organization. to go into this. So first of all, <laughs> yeah. for people watching, because it is totally fine, y'all, if you don't know what an ion is or you don't remember, okay, it's totally fine. Darshna, please tell us what is an ion and why that, why is that the framework? Yeah. So going back to that core question of if everything is vibration, how can we change reality? And then that deeper question is what holds reality in place? I imagine if everything is information, which is what it is in format, ion, ion. Mm -hmm. a structure of particles. And I'm like, all right, we'll call them ions, like pixels in this holographic ion. matrix. Yes. Yes. So if we just call them ions, and people can relate it from the scientific charge of energy because it still holds true in physics. All of these structures still hold true uh, in the quantum, in the, the physics realm. Yes. But ion is simply a way for us to now look at language. Every word that ends in ION, like compassion, compass ION, if we just look at the etymology of all I these love words, that. you start to see what we're doing with these pixels of energy, that entangled vibrational field of energy so it helps us take a moment because we're actually creating the frequency that's creating the persistence of the structures the information that is our reality when i say information i'm not talking about news i'm talking about the particles of energy and news is simply one form of communication yes program talking about so atoms molecules neutrinos yes. all of Everything, all of everything is information that we're absorbing. I get that. And that's it's Mercury. It's the for... foundational syntax. So foundation, what I created yes. was a foundation. It's basically, it's basically the software code um, to create a new structure of reality. If we related to reality as a foundational interconnected vibration, we can literally have a new depth perception. It's what Einstein said. If we want to yes. solve today's problems, we need a new consciousness, a new perspective. This is simply one perspective that I'm putting out into the, you know, the, the collective field. Yeah, and saying, here's one way to look at it. If everything is simply these pixels, these ions, and every word that has an ion in it is telling us what we're doing with this frequency, in that simple interaction, it's the interaction that's creating the system. The system, we are each a part of this massive equation, contributing a frequency, an algorithm to that massive equation. Every ION word is literally telling us if we're meditate ION, meditate is to measure. It's like taking inventory of our charge of energy. That's simple. Wow, such an interesting way to put it. I never thought about it that way. And simple. And for someone like me, I like things to be scientifically charged, okay? I like the verbiage. Um, I very, I need this type of information, but this could be overwhelming to some. So how would someone use your model? And could you take a little bit of time and just break down the model a little bit? You keep referring to it. I'd love to go into a little bit more depth about it. Beautiful. So the model, the framework was an eight year, introspection so when i was doing energy work during the day in the evenings um this is after i finished my master's in conflict which really opened up my lens to understand how we how conflict is related to change um right. so as a change master in organizations i was like oh you actually need to understand conflict with nobody studies um to understand yeah they avoid it yeah exactly 
So what I, what I learned in that master's program was really that emotion and cognition together is what creates belief, right? And we know that now as a society, many people are waking up to the fact that there's always a belief at play. So that top left quadrant, you'll see it's like a big X um, or big cross in the top left quadrant. So there's four main quadrants. That's our interior experience of life, like our our psyche. That's how we're wired. That's how we're perceiving. That's where it says notion and cognition. Okay. Yeah, that top left. So that Perfect. box there with the number one, perception, that's the how an individual makes sense of the world, right? And that literally is a projection. It's a it's a, an, an abstraction. I always look at it like we're crystals. We could be pretty clear and simple, or we can have a lot more complexity, or we can have the complexity, but understand the clarity at the same time. So yes. a lot of people, 3D, 5D, you know how to be clear while still seeing the layers of complexity below. That's what this tool offers, is you can be synchronized and clear and literally survey what's happening. So what happens then on the right you're taking some kind of action or typically a reaction if you're in response mode there's a right. lot of things here so i'm going to keep moving to the bottom right that's our collective outer reality that whole right side is the outer illusion right, organization right? Mm -hmm. so those systems and structures of the illusion again it's all a big it's a holographic matrix we're experiencing here and then the bottom left is culture that's giving us our narrate ion etymology of narrate is to tell we're telling right. the light particles literally how to oscillate and how to be expressed at the quantum yes level, right? the observer so, the observer effect proved that exactly exactly and so what happens what this tool offers us is a, a point to be in zero gravity as you're saying christopher the observer affects affects the observed so in order to allow greater flow in the evolution of a system, there has to be a neutral polarity because we know a third lens of polarization that's neutral allows light to pass through that was not there before. So it opens up the wave expression. It's almost like making something out of nothing. It's about the emergence. So this tool allows emergence to happen because in that top left, that not ion, the notions, that is intuition. Intuit ion is to know beyond reason. What is reason? Mm. Cognition. Cognition is what holds us in the box. Right. And then what happens? Cognition is holding us in the box. And then the emotional entanglement is what Beautiful. then creates the reaction and is perpetuating a particular motion of the oscillation of the particles in our 3D reality, which then culture is continually regurgitating right when we recycle when we continue what we resist persists. what we say casts a spell verse ion we're singing a collective frequency a song that is held in place with our collective projection and we're caught in a box of reaction in an illusion so this is a way to be, regain our multi-dimensional full capacity divine potential to be on this outside box and be able to this is brilliant because, you know, so many people are following Abraham, okay? And many people who use Abraham's verbiage now all over Instagram. And a lot of people are very into Bashar, like myself. I'm really into Bashar and his type of verbiage. You know, this, this seems to, I mean, absolutely correlate with all the things that they're saying. But, you know, Abraham telling you to, to meditate every day for 15 minutes, some people, it's just not good enough. Some people, the way their mind works and their, percep their perception needs something like this. So this is extremely valuable. This is, this is resonating with me right now because it gives me a map to understand, okay, I'm, in, I'm responding right now. I could kind of follow this back to, I, I get what it's doing. I can, I can pull out of the experience and be the observer and and understand the framework that's happening here although this this is going to take me several go rounds to fully digest this and understand it this is its own teaching kind of like astrology or human design or any of those so i mean how can people where do people learn about this in depth thanks for that opportunity um turn your ion.com is uh, the website. And then from there, the YouTube, turn your eye on, turn your ION 
is probably the best place. And then I've had a community, um, a standalone community that's in pilot mode right now that I've started um, just so I can be, um, I'm not as, as keen on the day-to-day -day social media, Facebook, Instagram. So right. my private pilot community is a way just to stay engaged, but it's still blossoming and growing. But um, on Facebook and Instagram, it's unscripted way because this is basically helping us unscript and that was yes. my, my uh, energy brand, but turn mm -hmm. your eye on um, dot com and then on YouTube and then unscripted way for Facebook and Instagram. And then to schedule a session, turn your eye com. You'll see the scheduling there, both for individuals. And then I do organizational work as well. Cause I mean, this can be used. It's problem solving technology that integrates conflict, consciousness, change, communication. It's the lens language and logic of vibrational yes. intelligence. I could see people use like Apple or um, tech companies using it in their training models, you know, because at some point we are going to move out of, well, you all are just a bunch of personalities here. We're going to move out of that into you all are a bunch of light beings with lots of different qualities and there's a lot of connect connection happening here. So this work is so valuable. And I really appreciate that you came on here. I don't feel like we completed this. I don't feel like I've got the full story. And so I would like to have you on again. Would that be okay? I would love that. Okay. I know there's a lot of layers and thanks for dancing with my, my journey I, I has a lot to. of layers and this has a lot of layers anywhere you want to go. I'd love to. Yes, I, this has been incredible. So I really appreciate you. We are going to have you back on here. People are going to have questions. I already know it. So Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this week for the Chronicles of Chiron. Like she said, if you want to book a session or if you want more information, go to TurnYourEyeOn.com. And of course, if you'd like to book a session with me or more information about me, go to ChristopherWithAYMedium.com. Or you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at V.AstroMedium. Thank you, everyone. And we will see you all next week for another Chronicles of Chiron here on Soulfire at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a good night.